Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom. So here, 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 talk about I and I, brother, Burhana Selassie, a.k.a. Robert Nesta Marley, better known as Bob Marley. Now here from the IUIC, M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-C, -E yes, but they have a very true title on this meme here where it says, skin color does not determine bloodline. But who is saying that skin color regarding I and I brother, Burhana Selassie, a.k.a. Bob Marley, who's saying that because he has black skin, black, reddish brown skin, that this is why we say that he is our brother. No, he's our brother because you are, <laughs> if your mother's a Jew, <laughs> a true Yehudit, then so are you. Again, I repeat, if your mother is a Yehudit, a Jew and a true Jew, a believing Yehudit, then so are you. Now, many are going to say, well, the Bible, when the Bible says, and they're going to go to the fourth book of Moshe, Hebrew book, Bamidbar, Bamidbar in the wilderness, or a.k.a. Numbers, Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. Many of the other Israelites, because we represent the Israelites of Ethiopia, we the black Jews of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, they're going to go to that verse right there in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18, but not really understand the context of what is being numbered there in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. And let's recall that those who are numbered in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18, that Yahweh, that Jehovah HaKadosh, Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name, was not well pleased, that Hashem was not well pleased with them, the men of war. Those are the men of war. Those are the same men of war who, who, who slandered, right? They slandered the land. We can get into that, get into those verses right there, but it's clear if you read and study the book of Numbers that yes, there's a numbering according to the pedigree of one's fathers because those were the ones who were to go forward into the land and to be the strike force to inherit the land. See, the inheritance Hebraically is a little different than what we hear about inheritances today. The inheritance was to drive out the squatters, the Kana'anu'anu, the Canaanites, that were squatting on that land because the earth is Jehovah's and the fullness thereof. So he is the landlord. Jehovah is the landlord. Just to clarify that brief matter right there, because ones are going to say, well, are you saying that it doesn't matter what your father is? It does matter. It does matter what your father is. There is the patrilineal descent and there is the matrilineal Descent, but this is regarding our brother Burhana Selassie, our brother Bob Marley. Because many ain't right latter day so called Israelites, and yes, they are Israelites according to the flesh. And that's the problem there. Not because they're Israelites according to the flesh, but it's like they're only Israelites according to the flesh, but not the spirit and the truth, the spirit of the word. There were many Israelites who were Israelites according to the flesh who Jehovah was not well pleased with. Have you really read the Bible? Have you read the Old Testament? The Brit Yeshana? Have you read the Hebrew Bible, i.e. called the Old Testament? Now, in the Brit Hadasha, in the Renewed Covenant, the Adis, the Hadis Kidan, the New Covenant, something very interesting, especially regarding this question concerning Burhana Selassie, concerning Bob Marley. We heard some of the ISUPK, the other Israelites there, say that Bob Marley was a white man, but then they contradict themselves because they say they feel closer to the white man, so-called white man, than they do to so-called Africans. That's what some of the... ISUPK have said, right? We got them on record on video. We could get you the audio. You can hear that. We could touch on that at another time. It's out there. I think it was Captain Tazaria who said something like that. And it was uh, Shaka, Shaka Amo, say, who kind of called him out on that, right? It was a, one of those cross the line kind of things out there, right? Then we have this right here from the IUIC, from 
the one they call not Nate. Nate is, is that his name? Nate Nathaniel Nathaniel. Yeah. Okay. The I U I C. You popo Nathaniel. You popo. You police. I mean. We have brothers and sisters who've served in the armed forces and law enforcement and so forth and so on. But some things we heard, but we're not going to go on those hear, hear, say things, right? But I guess you heard say some things too, right, concerning Burhan Salasi, concerning Bob Martin. So this IU, I see there's another one. I think either we got it or we need to get that one where they have um, Mariah Carey, right? And they say, well, Mariah Carey is an is a, is a Israelite. And Bob Marley, they say, is an Edomite. I don't think they really understand what's an Edomite. They think that the Edomite is the white man, so-called white man. Do, do y'all know Hebrew? Have you ever taken the time to really learn Hebrew? I'm not talking about the baby Hebrew, the basic Abba, Gada. You know, th that is important. Abba, Gada, you know, <laughs> Abu Gida. We have that Ethiopic, Abu Gida. Hey, we're so, right? And going on all the way to the... Tau, right? To the Tav or the Tau, right? But no, we're talking about Hebrew, Hebrew, right? Aleph, the Aleph Beit, the first house. Because if you do, then you will learn some things very important because Adam, right? And Adam both refer to reddish brown you know reddish brown you ever seen the ground the earth when the earth you looked at the earth the earth like the concrete jungle come out the concrete jungle look at the earth the reddish brown ground right that reddish brown ground adam some say adam was black others say that adam was white what if i told you that adam was reddish brown like the reddish brown ground alif dam first blood dam hebrew blood right there and then also Dawid, David. David was called Adomni, Adomni. We are some other Israelites, any of the Sakari Israelites, you know, with that particular camp there. Um, and also, I think in the past, there were David Lynn. We have that. We're going to share that as well. Where they totally misread the scripts, totally misread what's in the Bible concerning um, Michal, Michal. Um, Dawid's um, first, I think, like his first wife, the daughter of Shaul, the daughter of Saul, King Saul, and um, the first king of Israel. And um, after he had married um, Michal, Saul's daughter, Saul, Saul, an evil spirit was on Saul. He was an Israelite, but he had an evil spirit. So he was an Israelite, yeah, but he ain't, he, he wasn't right either, right? Anyway, he sought to kill his son-in-law. Right, so his daughter Michal, Michael in the scripture in the Bible, she puts a teraphim. Teraphim is like um like a kind of a mannequin where the men of war would put their armor, right, their armor on the teraphim, right, the teraphim, you know, and basically keep it, you know, keep it well oiled, keep it well fit and everything, so they could just put it on when they needed to. So she took the teraphim, like a life size mannequin, and she put it, right, she put it in the she put it in the bed, and then she put a pillow of goat's hair, of goat's hair. Now, many of these ain't right Israelites. See, reading is important. You may read well, but you don't interpret well. You don't understand well. You need reading comprehension. You never took reading comprehension in school because they say that David had goat's hair. He said David had goat's hair to imply that, well, David's hair was like, like white people's hair. It wasn't woolly hair. But he was a Negro and he was a Judahite and he was a, you know, and then they point to like some, like a more of a white Hispanic and say, well, he looked like that. No, 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 no. First of all, that area in the scripture, it says a pillow, a pillow of goats here. In other words, it wasn't a pillow with goats here on the outside like you see in some crazy Western Gentile kind of nonsense films and other stuff. Like No, it was a pillow that had goats here inside. It was stuffed with goats here. So the, the goats here was inside the pillow. And besides that, the, the scripture says that, and she covered it over. So when they came in to, to get David, Michael said that David was sleeping, that, you know, Dawid was sleeping. Right, so they came, no doubt, probably peeked, looked in, and saw, you know, the form in the bed, the teraphim, a life-size mannequin, and then she put the pillow that had goats here in it, right, which was covered over, 
right? The end, and he thought so, and he went back to Saul, and it's, it's a very interesting, you know, narrative right there. I think it's in Shemuel. I think it's in Shemuel, Samuel. Check it out, check it out, check it out. But we see, we point to that because when they now allege that Burhan Selassie, Bar Marley, right, is an Edomite, not an Israelite, right, and that he's a white, not a black man, because, because his father, right, is said to be or have been a white man, right? But see, we tried to peep them to this before. I don't know if they caught it, but, you know, you if your mother is a Yehudit, if your mother is a Jew, right, then you're a Jew, right? Now, once you say, oh, that's what, the, that's what the other Jews, that's what, like, the white Jews say. No, no, see, they got this from the real Jews, from the real Yehudi, right? And you'll get this if you really study the Torah and you study Scripture. Yes, it's written in some Mishnah. And some of the teachings, you know, teachings are called Talmud, but they all get caught up on the Babylonian Talmud, right? You see, if you take all the Israelite beliefs and opinion of these latter-day Israelites, the other Israelites, right? You take all of their opinions, even ours as well, because we're also Israelites, Israelites of Ethiopia, the line of the tribe of Judah, black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, Israelites, put it all together, the good, the bad, all the opinions, ask this camp what they think about this, you write that down, ask the next camp what they think about this, you write the same thing, and then we put it all together in a compendium of what different camps teach. That's what, Talmud is an operative word that means teaching. There is more Talmud than just the Babylonian Talmud. We have to point these things out because some might pick up on it. And whether you think we're right or wrong, check it out for yourself. So here, here, we're going to prove that if they say, well, what, what's the Bible say? You know how to, you know, I want to say, what's the Bible? No problem there. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, and we're going to liken Bob Marley here to Timothy. Timothy was a disciple. You know, Timothy, Timothy else, right? Timothy was a disciple. His mother was a Yehudit. She was a Jewish in the KJV, it says Jewess, right? And his father was a Greek. So we can put this in the paradigm of his mother was black and his father was white. Did that make him any less a Israelite, a Hebrew, a Jew, a disciple? No, no, no. It didn't make him no less. Jobless. Okay, so here, here. Here, here, here. Here's the other. Here's the other one right here. They say the truth is not about skin color. Who, who, who said? Who said it was about skin color? Who, who said the truth was about skin color? Although we do say our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we say black, especially in this Western Gentile world. This latter day times of the, the end times of the Gentiles, this Anglo American world order, we're saying black not just because your skin gotta be black, 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 like blue, black, right? It's a political statement as well. If, if you you might not understand that, right? But scripture speaks about spiritual things, historical things, poetical things, parabolical things, and also political things. See, we're talking about nationhood, right? So we have to understand these things. Right? So here's the other meme. So they say, they blaspheme our brother. Then they blaspheme us and they blaspheme, they slander the scripture. Right? That's why those Israelites in the wilderness know they point to a true area of scripture in Numbers, Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. Let's go here for a moment. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. Walk with me, talk with me. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. Let's go right here. Numbers chapter 1. The key word right here is pedigree. There we go, pedigree. No doubt from our last boom. Here's what they'll point to, right? Save, save you all the trouble because you'll point to this. And yes, we, we know this verse, but we also know the continuity of the verses, the context of the scripture. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month and they declare their pedigrees. What's the pedigree? Let's bring it up. Yalad, Yalad. What is Yalad? To be, to bring forth, to beget, to gender, to travail. Basically, go down to the, the strongs right here. A primitive root, to be a young. 
causes him to beget, right? Basically, specifically here in this context to show lineage, their lineage. They declared what? Their pedigrees, their lineages, after their families by the house of their fathers, of their patriarchs, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. All right now, this is where the men of war, the host, the men of war in the scripture was being numbered. I got to show you something else too, right here. Let's point to we we have the men of war, right? The men. Let's go men and let's put war right here. The men of war. What happened to these men of war? Let's go over to numbers right here. To numbers. Scroll down here to numbers. What happened to the men? of war right what happened to the men of war right we're going to show you what happened to the men of war right the men of war as the same thing that a lot of the ain't right israelites have done right the men of war right the men of war saying to the men of war the ordinances for battle for the men of war right the men of war right there the men of war right divided from the men of war right there Let's go to the men of war, right? The sum of the men of war, right? The men of war. Now, this is where the men of war were successful, right? But it's a, it's a new generation. There was the old generation. Let's bring this up right here. The old generation. Boom, here, because here, here we go. This is when, when Moshe, Moses right here, is basically giving his farewell speech. We're in Deuteronomy, Devarim. Deuteronomy, fifth book of Moshe, Hebrew book called Deuteronomy, Devarim, the words, Hadevarim, chapter 2, verse 14. And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea until we were come over the brook Zered was 30 and 8 years. Right? 30 and 8 years. So Moshe is saying from this point to this point, as we travel, the number of years was 38 years. You'll know about the 40 years, right? What happened and, and why did it happen that the Israelites, something that was a 11-day, maybe 40-day journey, what happened that caused it to be a 40 years? Do you know about the, the, the year for a day? Remember the spies? The spies were sent to go into the land of Canaan. Right, Canaan, like the Afro-Canaan, the Afro-Canaanite land, was sent to go into the Canaan, the Canaanite land, Afro-Canaanite land. Right, they saw it was a beautiful land. But the same thing that many of the ain't right Israelites do with Africa, and we're speaking about the land, they do, or they done did, the same ones who were numbered. So here we have it reading that until all the generation of the men of war, so you ask many of the camps, so wh why y'all do that? Why y'all say this? Why y'all dress that way? They say, we are the men of war. war. They're, the, they're, they're like an army, right? Which is good. It's a good thing. But your carnal mind is a bad thing. Your lack of study to show yourself approved. Your zeal is a good thing, right? The zeal is a good thing. The lack of knowledge is a bad thing. Right? And here, Moshe is recounting right here in his farewell, you could say his farewell speech, his last sermon, this is before Moshe, Robeinu Moshe, before he passes on. He says that the space was 30 and 8 years. You count, right? 30 and 8, 30 plus 8, 38 years. Right? Until all the generation of the men of war. Now, the men of war here in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 14, it connects with the pedigree and the numbering we have in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. So here, Deuteronomy 2, 14, connected with Numbers, Numbers chapter 1, verse 18, right? So that wasn't naming all the Israelites. That was naming the sons of the sons of the patriarchs. Remember the promise? of the land given to Abraham and to his son Yitzhak and to his son Yaakov. This is why it doesn't include Esau. See, Esau was of the flesh, but he wasn't of the spirit, 
right? So it goes to Yaakov, Yaakov here, Yaakov, aka Yisrael, Israel. Now, Israel had how many children? If you say 12, you're wrong. He had 13 children. He had 12 sons, one daughter, right? Now, of those 12 sons, right, of those 12 sons, they had children, right? So at this point of the exodus and, and out in the wilderness, they're getting ready. They were ready in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18 to cross over and enter into the land and to bang on the heathen and the Gentiles and the Canaanites and push them out and thus inherit the land. Right? They had to be that vanguard. And was there was the promise, there was the faith, right? Faith without what? Faith without what? Faith without works is dead. So they had the faith, yes, we're the Israelites. Jehovah has redeemed us, has brought us out. Now they're being numbered in the wilderness in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18, and they had to cross over to go into the land. But they punked out, they cowed out, like you hear once about Africa, we ain't African, not, not African, not African, the booty scratcher, blah, 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 so on and so on. But the promised land is from the river of Egypt, which is the same as the river Gihon, the river of Ethiopia, to the river of the Euphrates. We've got to show you a map of that between the two rivers, right? This is why on the Israel flag, we have those two blue lines. Now, the Israel flag is from our Ethiopian Hebrew, black Hebrew, black Jewish community from back in the 1920s. We've said that before in another video, the true origin of the flag. We're going to revisit that as well because a lot of ones saying, oh, because of, because so-called white Jews, the Khazari and whatever, so on and so on. The reason why they were able to go up ahead and did what they did is because of all these silly divisions the silly nonsense that we have. You can see it among the camps coming from the Israeli school, ISUPK, they become church over here, they go over here, they break down over there, they do this, they go against the patriarch, the Ethiopian Hebrew commandment keepers, community of the living God, now there's confusion, right? And now they want to step to the elect, to, to the call, chosen, and faithful Rastafari, we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah. Nah, 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 nah. Sit down and learn this one right here. So those men of war, that many of the Israelites say, uh, you're an Israelite, see, it's showing what your pedigree. That was specifically for those who would have land rights, who would basically would own land, so to speak, although all the land is Hashem, is Jah, Yahuwah, HaKadosh, Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem, although all the land is the Most High's, right? He has given that land to the patriarchs, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, because he's the Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Yaakov. He is the true good, the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob's name was changed to Yisrael. Israel had 12 sons. These 12 sons went down into Egypt with their families. They increased. The men, the number of the men were over 600,000, not including the women and the children. Now, in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18, that numbering is a numbering of those who would be the men of war. The very same men of war mentioned right here, here, here in Deuteronomy chapter 2 and 14. It says what? It says, until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out. What? What? They were wasted out from among the hosts. So a new host. They were not found to be, deemed to be worthy. So when you ask men, the Israelites, the camps, what about, okay, we're getting our stuff together. What about going forward and getting our land? And they say, well, we have to wait for the Most High. We have to wait for God. He's going to crack the sky. Great God will come from the sky. So none of that is there in Scripture. None of that is there in Scripture with us going forward. Once, once the host comes together, Right? Where's the marching orders from the commanders and the generals? See, because they're telling you something different, but they're pointing to this here. We're in the Torah, in the first five books of the Bible, in the books of Moshe. Where are we? We're in the books of Moshe. But what they didn't tell you is that generation of those who were numbered, the Lord, right, Yahuwah, Jehovah, Adonai was not well pleased with them. And thus, because of Moshe's pleading, 
beseeching because of Moses' advocacy. Jehovah then destroyed them right then. Remember what Jah said when we were on so far, so we say Jehovah speaking the English, right? Yahuwah. What did he say, right? He said, Moses, stand back, Moses. Let me destroy this people. I'll make a great nation out of you. Now think about it for a moment. Moshe, who was his wife, right? Zipporah, right? The Medianite, who was his wife? Right? The unnamed but the Ethiopian, right? Some think that the Ethiopian was the Medianite, the Medianite was the Ethiopian. You're confusing things. These are two different nations. Even the other Israelites will tell you that, right? Right? The Medianites is one nation, clearly defined in scripture, and the Ethiopians another nation, Kushim, Kushite, Kushit, clearly defined in the scripture. So Moshe had two wives. I know some of y'all wasn't taught that because it makes you up because you don't study to show yourself approved. The point is that Moses, a great nation would have been made out of Moshe. That's what he said to Moshe, I'll make a great nation out of you. Why? Because of this generation of the man of war. Right? It says for 38 years. So what happened, they wandered for 38 years well, 40 years in total in the wilderness until the men of war who were numbered, those who were numbered in that first chapter of numbers until they died out. But the question now comes to us, why? Here in Deuteronomy 2 and 16, it says, So it came to pass when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people, the people, now, see, the people, here's what they recognize by Israel, Israel come out of Egypt. We have the direct family descended from the patriarchs and their wives and their children and children's children, right? And then we have a mixed multitude, right? So we have the Hebrew. See, they tell you that Hebrew is according to blood, but no, Hebrew is according to faith. We're going to prove that as well. Hebrew is according to faith, right? Hebrew is according to faith. Right? Being Yisrael, being Israel, being Yehudi of the tribe of Judah. Now, when we're speaking about being Jew, and you are what your mother is. If your mother is a Jew, we are zooming in on the matrilineal descent. But this is not to ignore the patrilineal descent. The mothers and the fathers have different but corresponding or correlated roles, right? Correlated roles. There's a significance to the matrix or the matriarch and to the womb. This is why amongst many Yehudi and Jews today who were not ethnic Yisrael but converted right to Judaism, this is why it is said, if your mother's a Jew, then so are you. So we're applying this right here both to Bob Marley, Burhan Selassie, as well to use a biblical, because they say, well, you're not talking about the Bible. Well, we are talking about the Bible right here, and we're going to go forward and talk about the Bible with Timothy. His mother was a Jewess, and his father, right, his father was a Grecian. Burhan Selassie, Bob Marley's mother, right, a black Jewess, a Jewess, a Yehudit. And his father said to be a white Englishman. As I say, Grecian, Grecian. All right? So right here, here, here. All right, let's go here to this verse because there's, there's one verse between. Let's just read that one verse between. All right? Right here it says, For indeed the hand of Yahuwah, the hand of Jehovah, was against them, the men of war. The same ones that were numbered in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. To destroy them from among the hosts until they were consumed. So it came to pass when all the men of war were consumed and dead up from among the people, right? The Israelite people, the Israelite, the mixed multitude, right? The whole group, right? That Yahuwah, Jehovah spake to me saying, Thou art to pass over this Ar, the coast of Moab, this day. Now, the Moab and the Moor link is very important historically for us over here in this north country. When we go back to the Roaring Twenties and we go back to the, the, Moorish, the Moorish Jews, that community that became known as the Black Jews of Harlem, 
the Ethiopian Hebrews, also known as the commandment keepers, congregation of the living God, because Moab, or more, Moab was the last spot that they were in the wilderness before crossing over and going into the land. And we now can look at the Roaring Twenties, and we have a few that did cross over, like Rabbi Arnold, Josiah Ford, and others, and go into the land. But the great multitude still are wandering here in the wilderness because of this disobedience, this disobedience, and, and these bad teachers, right? These, these and I can say they're false, but, but they're bad on a lot of points that matter. Let's look at this word slander, bring this up right here. Show how they slander Africa. They slander the land, right? Right here. Numbers chapter 14. So we return to the fourth book of Moshe, fourth book of Moses, the Hebrew book called Numbers. Numbers chapter 14, verse 36. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him, See, Moshe was the appointed one. I was on a, um, what you know about God and his chosen people. And, you know, our Hebrew, our Israelite brother from ISUPK, Captain Azania, he, you know, he was like, Moses was ignorant. I said, but he married the Ethiopian. He was like, Moses was ignorant. Moses didn't know. I'm like, you call Moses ignorant. You know, and then he went round and round and even went to a list of the, of the seven nations trying to make an Ethiopian, an anti-Ethiopian point. I said, wait, those are the Canaanites. Those are the seven nations there, right? Those seven nations we were to have, according to Torah, no dealings with, no compromise with, nothing. We were supposed to drive them out or kill them. Right? That's what it was said in the Torah. That's what it said with those seven, those seven nations and those seven nations only. With other nations, it was a case by case basis. And you know, I even point point out to them many more touching on this about the whole Edomite thing. Right? Thou should not abhor an Edomite. They said, Well, I'm not abhorring, right? I just I just don't like them. And he said, Well, the Lord says, I love Jacob and I hate Esau, but but you're not you're not Yahweh, you're not Jehovah. You know, like I'm to do what my father tells me to do. I cannot do what he does. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I may be a mother ucker. You, you get me on that? Just to point that out right there. Obedience. Right? But here we have the spies. There was 12 spies. You get this. There was 12 spies that went forward to search out the land. And 10 of them brought back lies. Only two were faithful. Caleb and Yehoshua. Right, Yehoshua, Caleb, and Hosea. Hosea, his name was changed by Moshe to Yehoshua to Joshua. Only those two were faithful. And while the other ones dead up, they remain to be a guidance to the next generation. They lived to be a guidance to the next generation, which crossed over and went forward into the land. Now, the reason why those who were numbered in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18, why insist on what their pedigree is. Because one can be an Israelite, right, by descent, right, or when Israel is properly established, one can be a citizen, right, becomes a citizen, right, of that becomes nationalized. So you have two levels of Israelite. Those who are the direct descendants and they are the ones who have land owning rights. Because at the times and the seasons that Yisrael is to appear before Yahuwah, Lifneyowah, before Jehovah in the holy times and seasons and to bring forth their gifts and the offerings and the tithes, the ones who pay tithes, not everybody in Yisrael pay tithes. Because the only ones who have true income according to Torah was those who had land. And the only ones who had land in Yisrael, according to Torah, were those who were descendants of the patriarchs and could prove their descendancy from the patriarchs by the conditions and qualifications we have in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. But those Israelites in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18, they had to put in that work to fight in the land, but because of the men, the spies, who brought back lies, 
and discouraged, they murmured against Moshe, they murmured against, what the word says here, by bringing up a slander up on the land. Like many of them bring up a slander up on the African land. They bring up a slander on the African land, especially the land between the two rivers that in Genesis chapter 15, that's what was promised to Abraham. That's the full extent of the land inherited. Not the Palestinian covenant. You have this over saying the Palestinian covenant was a land grant. Now a lot of these subject matters and issues are very important for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated really to understand the context of land grant, right? According to the glory of his divine majesty, but you can clearly see that they brought up a slander up on the land. Now, we can get into more of the details of it, but it's suffice it to say right here that there is a context, right, to the pedigree, right, that pedigree descent from the fathers, right here where it says right here, from the fathers, right, by the house of their fathers, so that is a patrilineal, patrilineal descent, but there's also the matrilineal. The matrilineal descent. So now, this whole question about, well, what does it mean that if you're a Jew, if your mother is a Jew? This is confusing to a lot of non-Jews, non-Yehudi, and ones who have even some Yehudi or Jews, if they have not studied this. If they had not studied this, we'd like to get into more of the details of this, but we're going to use this first example right here especially concerning the slander against Burhana Selassie, where they say that Bob Marley is Esau, right? Bob Marley is not Esau. They try to say that Ma Mariah Carey is Jacob, right? Well, I don't know what her, what her mother is or her father is. She might well be. But see, this right here was against Rastafari. This is against the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings of Ethiopia, the king of Yisrael. See, see, this is this is the same thing that no Moshe is the one who brought them out, <laughs> and already they was trying to go around Moses, right? And then when he appoints, right? When Jehovah, right, the Lord appoints Moses to be that one, they go against. They act like they can serve the Lord around the ones that He has elected, that He has sent and signified. So what I'm saying to y'all is that ones like Burhana Selassie, right, Bob Marley and others were sent and signified. And these other guys remind me of Korah. There's like Korah. Remember Korah? Korah's rebellion, right? What if Korah's rebellion were to be successful? Well, look around at the division among all the camp Israelites, right? And they'll slander Burhana Selassie, right? And they say, he's an Edomite, right? They'll say, oh, he's a white man. Why? Why did they say that he was a white man? Because his father was white, right? And some of y'all might believe that too, right? But then what about Timothy? So we're going to use a biblical example, our first example, Timothy. Because to go into the more detail of the matrilineal descent, right, vis-a-vis patrilineal descent let's just give a, a brief a brief overview right because of all the teachings right of um yehudinet of of the judaic tribe and many of these teachings precede the conversal Khazarian, Caesarian, ashkenazi jews many of these are rooted before them because people would believe that oh the white jews made up of oh, these things and those things they did add some things here and there according to their particular ethnic customs but much of this is older this is why i'm pointing to the case of timothy of timothy right of timothy in the bible but first things first right here you are what your mother is if your mother is a jew then so are you. Now let's go over here. Let's go to this right here. All right. Let's go to this right here. All right. Because I, I saw someone had posted something about how many of the Israelites are schizo, schizophrenic. And there is a lot of this schizophrenia. For example, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right. Not example of schizo, but example of right-mindedness. Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right. 
the link between if you're a Jew, if your mother's a Jew, is in essence this link with Yeshua HaMoshiach being conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now, I know there's many ones that say, oh, you're talking about immaculate conception, immaculate conception. Um, I think you understand what Immaculate Conception is. Immaculate Conception, according to the actual teaching and doctrine of Immaculate Conception, is that Mariam, this Mariam, St. Mary, Holy Mary, was born without original sin. That is what that's about. What we're saying is that when the scripture says that a virgin, one who did not have sex with a man, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, that truly... Ha Elohim, the true good, the true God, is Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior's father. So his physical descent directly comes from his mother. So the link between you're a Jew, if your mother's a Jew, if your mother's a Jew, you're a Jew. And it is in Gulmarium, Mary, right? Mary, the mother of our Lord, Adonai Yeshua, Robeno Yeshua, our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is based on the same principle of the role and the significance of the matriarch, the significance of the matrix, right? And thus here of matrilineal, matrilineal descent and what is this about well it's the idea some may say the notion that the offspring of a gentile mother and a yehudi a jewish father is a gentile while the offspring of a yehudi a jewish mother and a gentile father is a jew now, like I said, some would say, oh, this is not Bible. That is some, some, some Jewish, white Jewish thing. Well, the white Jews, you know, those who are Torah observe it. They may observe it. But that preceded them and the Khazarian conversion, right, back in a couple of centuries ago. That precedes all of that. So let's go right here. Let's go right here, 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 right? as we so it matters what your mother is if your mother is a jew then so are you once again just to repeat this right here the basic principle right here this is based on the ancient teaching right that the offspring of a gentile mother and a yehudi a jewish father is a gentile in other words that that, that, that offspring, right, would have to convert. It's not passed on like that. Now, this is not dismissing the role of the father or of the, see, fa well, let's go on. Let's, let's first just, just cover this right here and we get to some of the particulars. Once again, the teaching that the offspring, the teaching and practice that the offspring of a Gentile mother, that means from any other nation, nationality, and a Yehudi father is still of that nation, is still a Gentile, a heathen in other words, in the other translation. Not pagan. Pagan is a false term that's been superimposed over heathen and Gentile. Gentile means just of other nation, of another nation other than called Yisrael, other than Israel. While the offspring of a Yehudit, right, mother or a Jewess and a Gentile father is a Yehudi. So applying this to Barhana Selassie, a.k.a. Bar Marley, his mother, a black Jew, a Yehudi, right? And he, right, a Yehudi because his mother, a Yehudit, a Jewess, a black Jew. Right, of the line of the tribe of Judah, right? And his father, his earthly father, was a Gentile or a Grecian, right? As we'll say right here, let's bring this to bear right here. And now here we're going to back this up, right? Because many will say, oh, that's a modern, that's a modern white Jewish thing. That's not biblical. That's not Torah. See, we're not dismissing the role of the father. But what they are dismissing, they're dismissing the role of the mother. 
All right, and maybe some of the sisters, the daughters, the mothers, and the wives can 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 you know yeah, and I mean to that right there. Better watch it. Acts chapter sixteen verse one says, "Then came he to Derbe, and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple, a certain Talmud. The word for disciple in Hebrew is Talmud. The word is what is Talmud." We get Talmud, Talmi, because our Talmud is the teaching of Adonenu Yeshua, Yeshua HaNotzri, Yeshua HaMushiach, Robainu, the Rabbi of Rabbis, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what separates us, we the Black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, from other Jewish you know, communities or denominations that may have their own rabbis or this rabbi, that rabbi, but our rabbi, the rabbi, rabbi is Yeshua Ha Moshiach, Yeshua Ha Notri. This is why, even in the Bible, he's called Robeno. In fact, the true, the real Christians, the true Christian, not the counterfeit, the true Christian, also have a rabbi, and that rabbi is our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua Ha Moshiach. So, then came he to Derbe. And Lystra, and behold, a certain Talmud disciple, Decamesmor, was there named Timotheus. Timotheus, this is Timothy, the son of a certain woman, right? A certain woman who was a Jewess. Who was a what? She was a Jewess. Iudaios, Iudaios, right? She was Jewish, belonging to the Yehuda nation, the Judahite nation. She was Jewish, a Yehudit, as respect to birth, origin, religion. Birth, origin, religion. A Judean. You see, Jehuda, Yehuda, right? Yehuda, right? And okay, here, let's just go to this right here, right? Let's, okay, let's just read on this. So it says, and she believed and she was faithful so not just that she was Yehudi uh, Jewess and she didn't believe right and we can apply this also to Sadella you know as well to Burhan Salat Bob Marley's mother right and she believed right she believed but his father was a Greek now here's some Israelites say well you know some places where it says that, that's that's Grecian, right? Some places it says that that's because they're Hellenized, you know? And let me show you this right here so that because one's going to say that and let's just save them the time. They could try to find something else, right? Let's go right here. Grecia, Grecian. Let's go to this part right here where it says, um, let's see, where is that part? It's right over here. Okay, Acts 6 and 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples of Talmudim, Dekam is too, was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows, their women, the widows, women who had lost their husband, their house bond, were neglected in the daily ministration, in the daily ministration. So here we go to G1675. It says, Elenistes, Elenistes, Elenistes or the Hellenist. What's a Hellenist? It's one who imitates the manners and customs or the worship of the Greek and use the Greek tongue. It's like we say, like living in the image of the beast you know, on one level, or you're trying to be white. You know, people say you're trying to be white. What, what, what happened to black folks in the Americas? They thought they could imitate, conk their hair, dress up, you know, talk and imitate white behavior, and that white people would, you know, accept them more into the community of the Anglo Saxon, white Anglo Saxon Protestant, you know, Anglo American world. Y'all you, you know that history right there? Right, one of the reasons why maybe the woman's, you know, black woman, a lot of them, not all, not all, not all, wear these wigs and all this type of stuff, and you know, why a lot of these black men are bald, running around bald. I mean, I don't really know, but living in the image of other people, the manners and custom. That's a Hellenistes in the Greek. Hel Hellenis Hellenistes, Hellenistes, 
right? Or uses the Greek tongue, like, for example, there's many ones that say, oh, the New Testament, I don't do the New Testament, the New Testament is Greek, right? But you don't speak or really know real Hebrew. You don't speak real Hebrew, right? You don't know Hebrew, you're speaking English. And if I look at your ID, though, I, you want me to call you this, this, this so-called Hebrew name you're using now in the camps, but your ID don't say that. So, so you're, you're, you too are an Hellenistes that dress up sometime as an Israelite, right? Using the New Testament of Jews, right? Get this right here? So it has two meanings, right? It can be anybody, right? You know, Hellenists. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like, you know, living in the, the, the uh, uh, image of the, the system. You know, like a lot of people, for example, in America, people come from other foreign countries, Africa, Asia, you know, where they have their own tradition, their own clothing, their own style. So they all come over here, they put on jeans, you know, to get a pair of jeans. It's like they got gold or something like that. And they want to, you know, imitate a lot of the manners and behaviors of people over here. They watch these TV shows, these sitcom, sitcom, watch these sitcoms and everything. And they can't wait to get to America to throw off their traditional clothing. Right? And go about something that would change their names, maybe something like get surgery, you know, to look more American. I'm American, you know what I'm saying? That's the same thing was going on because after all, the Greeks gave this Western Gentile Latter day society democracy. And the Romans gave them Republican. And every couple of years or whatnot you argue about, you know, red state, blue state, put the two together, you got the whole the whore that rides on the beast. That's revelation there. But here, the second use of it is Hellenistes is used in the New Testament, the Brit Chadasha, the renewed covenant, Adis Kidan, of Yehudi, right, of Judeans, Judahites, that were born in foreign lands and speak Greek. That's like black folks that say they're Hebrews and Israelites and they live where? in foreign lands, America or the Caribbean, right? And they speak what? English or some broken slang or, you know, ghetto ease, which is just a, you could, even patois. <laughs> you know you, you're still speaking not what you are saying you be, right? Basically. So that's, that's how it's applied here. Strong's break it down simply. It's a derivative of what? Elaine. Now, Elaine is different. That's what it says this one was a Greek. Greek either by nationality, whether native of the mainland or of the Greek islands or colonies. Because the Greeks, the ancient Gracoi, actually, we're talking about the white folks. See, there were the original people who inhabited those islands. They are called Ionians. Or in the Bible, look up the name Javan, J-A-V-A-N. Those are the Ionians or the Minoans. Look at their architecture and their pictures. You can see that they were reddish brown black peoples, right? Same thing with the original Romans. The original Romans were the Etruscans. They were black people before the Latin, right? The Latins or the Latin or, or albino white so-called people, albino peoples. What they did with the Tasmanian people in... Tasmania, they killed them off. What he did in Australia, they took it over. What he did in America, reduced the Native Americans to smithereens. What they have done elsewhere, you see, so, you know, nothing new under the sun, right? In the wider sense, look at the second entry. In a wider sense, because this is what Timotheus' father is called a Greek. Some might try to go to this verse right here, right, this verse right here, and say, oh, it's the same as this. No. Here in Acts chapter 6, verse 1, it's talking about a dispute, right, when the number of disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of those disciples, right, and the Grecians that were born abroad, foreign, right, they were, they, they were born abroad, and he was sent back. Because under the Roman territory, because of the rise of the, of the, you could say the Nazarene movement, like the real Rastafari movement, Israelite movement, because of the rise of that, they were deported. Claudius deported many of them back to Judea or back to wherever they thought they were from. 
so many of them came back. It's almost like you have a lot of foreign people over here from parts of Africa. You know, if America gets that point, it can just deport them back. So then there'd be conflicts between the people who are abroad, living abroad, and like the other people, like the Africans living back at home, so to speak. So this is the same thing that happened here with the people who were born abroad, who were ethnically of the Hebrews, but they were now living, you know, as Greeks, right? And there was a dispute between them. You see what I'm saying? The homeborn, like a good example is the Africans who are over in Africa and they send their families over here and then a couple of generations maybe of their families are over here. Then all of a sudden if there rises up somebody like who want to deport all the immigrants or people who are not whatever qualification, they send them all back. There'll be a conflict, right? Because the people who are coming back, although they're from in, in the ethnicity, that land, wherever it is, take Ethiopia, for example, right? You know, though they're, they're, they're from there, there'll be a conflict amongst them. That's what's happening here in Acts chapter 6, verse 1. That is different than, that's different than Timothy. Timothy's situation is an ideal Bob Marley situation. Right? To prove the principle that if your mother is a Yehudit, a Jew, or a Jewess, then so are you. And this is to prove that we have a biblical, a biblical, let me say that one more time, a biblical citation of it for those who it must be in the Bible, King James only Bible. Here we go. Acts chapter 16, verse 1. Right? And it's not mocking the scripts, it's mocking y'alls, right? Um, who, you know, who are on this kind of thing, that's yeah, been the King James Bible. Well, you know, if you study, you, you'll find the truth. If it's truth, you'll find it there. Here we find it here. Then came he to Derbe and to Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, who, I don't like to say witch, because witch is the witch, or is the witch, right? Who was a Jewess and believed. And she had faith, but his father was a Greek. So let's hit that Greek, right? Like Bob Marley's father was what? He was a white man. He was a white man, you know. People. But then Berhana Selassie, Bob Marley said that Hannah Selassie is his father. So the brother always spoke truth. I accept that as true. But let's, you want to talk about the flesh? Let's talk about the flesh, all right? G1672, Elaine. Now, you know, remember there's a... There's a Hellenist, right? There's a Hellenist, which means like one who want to be like, you know, be like <laughs> the Elaine, the Elaine. That's, that's what the Greeks call themselves, Elaine, Elaine, you know? Um, the Gracois, that's what the Gracois call themselves. They were descendants of El, Helen, Helen, Hel, Elaine, Elaine in the Greek. What does it define as? A Greek either by nationality, whether a native of the mainland or of the Greek islands or of the colonies, the Greek colonies. But let's go to the second one. In a wider sense, Elaine. So there's Elenestis, Elenestis, that's a Hellenist, right? That's like one who's into Hellenism. They're into the ism, schism. They're not really of it, but they're into it, you see? In a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews. Uh-oh. Embraces what? Let's go right here. All nations, not Jews. See, that's what happened with black folk. Black folks always trying to fit in somewhere. And they get to recognize, well, other people can, get, can be a part of it. You accept other people. How can you accept me? Because you don't know yourself. You a Jew. You a Hebrew. You are Israelite. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they don't know when you're going to flip. Right, Israelite, right? So all nations, not Jews. All nations, who? All nations, not Jews. That's so good. Take a, take a snapshot of that. Take a picture of that. Last longer. All nations, not Jews, that made the language, custom, and learning of the Greeks their own. It's what the nation of gods and earth should call half original. Black man, you half original. That means you think black a little bit. You know you black. When the police see you, you black. But you you, you think like you, you think like a gentile. You think like a like a white man. You got a white mind. Like they put all that rhetoric in you. You can't you can't think right. Right. This is what is this word right here. And the learning. Remember, it says all nations, not Jews. See, the other one said that Elenistes, It can include Jews. 
who are living in the image of the Greeks. Right? You go back to Maccabee, the Maccabee Bible, the Maccabee time, and that, that bring that out a little bit, how all that started out, Antiochus Epiphanes on Christmas Day, which y'all call Christmas, Christ Massacre Day, you know, December 25th, 168 BCE, right? But here, this is Elaine, this is the root word, right? And it clearly says, in a wider sense, the name embraces all nations. That means, that mean, call Goyim, call Goyim all the goyim, all the nations, not lo Yehudim, not Yehudim, not the Yehudi, not the Jews that made the language, custom, and learning of the Greeks their own. You know, like a lot of people nowadays live in this um, Anglo-American culture, the Anglo-American cult, right? The primary difference is to a difference of what? You see what it says? The primary difference is to a difference of Sleeker. The primary <laughs> So nah. Right? The primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. The primary reference is to a difference of religion and worship. Right here. The primary reference, religion and worship. All right, let's just scroll down here to get to the root of this. Strong's definition, right? From the G1671, let's take a peek. Elas, Elas. What does Elas mean? Theia definition says Greek, Gracoi, the Gracoi, right? Equals unstable, the miry one. Remember what it says about the, the, the clay and the iron and all that don't mix? A country in Southern Europe uncertain they say uncertain affinity down here it says hellas hellas that's a hell of a name right hellas or greece a country of europe right against the root now here on Ellen, just to find out what bob marley's father i mean what timotheos's father was while well, his mother was a jew so therefore timotheos a jew too right so therefore the teaching that comes down to us in latter-day Judaism is biblically substantiated, right? A Helen, a Grecian, or inhabitant of Elis, by extension, a Greek-speaking person, especially a non-Jew. <laughs> especially highlight that right there. Just so one, see, you see the blue? Oh, well, that's, that's a kind of blue, all right? All right? Especially a non-Jew. In other words, a Gentile, a Greek. It's Greek week, right? It's Greek freak. Greek freak. Not a Yehudi. <laughs> Not a Jew. Do you, so you, are, are you understanding this right here? Right? That, so who was Timotheos's? Right? Timotheos, a disciple. Right? His name was Timotheos. He was the son of of a certain woman who was a Yehudit and she was faithful, she believed in Robenu Yeshua. Uh, her rabbi was Yeshua, Hanotri, uh, Yeshua, Hamushiach, Adonainu. Uh, but, 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 but his father was a Greek. Uh, let's just go to the next verse, just, just to, it says, who was well reported of by the brethren. So you want to talk about Brother Bob, Brahana Selassie, he's well reported by the brethren. Who are you? Step off, step back. That were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul, Paolo, and some of you are talking, some of you Jews, black Jews, you know, Hebrews are talking, talking sideways against Paul. You better learn how to read and interpret, right? Anyway, him would Paul have to go forth him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews. You know, like, like because these black Jews today, these Israelites, like, you know, they had to do some extra, right? Who were in those quarters for they all knew. You see that part? For they all knew, right? For they knew all. Uh, that's the KJV. For they knew all. For they knew all that his father was a Greek. They knew that his father was a Greek. Right? His father was a Greek. 
And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders who were at Yerushalayim. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. So he was a Yehudi, but being that his father, because see, the, remember we're talking about the father's role, the, the, patri, the, the patrilineal descent is important because the father also has a strong role and obligation. What is the role of the father? What is the strong obligation of the father? Well, the father, as Abraham becomes that template and type, right? The father is to teach, is to command, is to direct, right? The mother's role, well, we're going to have to do a whole other video and just get into that, get into that, right? Because ones need to get the real roots of this particular matter. But here, just making the connection concerning Burhana Selassie, right? Bob Marley, a black Jew. <laughs> we don't know what we we'll call it just yet, but you know we're gonna we're gonna find a name. Ones can well before it's up there, you probably won't see it. But anyway, here it says that um, yeah, a man disciplines his son. A man disciplines his son. Guides, direct commands, disciplines his son, trains his son to go forth, to think for himself, to be independent, to keep the covenant, of course, if he is a covenant keeper. And that's why we say that, well, you're a Yehudi if your mother is a Yehudi, right? Like if your mother is a Yehudi and your father is a Gentile. So because his mother was this, but his father obviously had, you know, how the Greeks were. They was, you know, they wasn't circumcised and all of that, so forth and so on. But because of the mother, right? The mother, the matrix, right? Because of the matrix, right? But here, 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 we'll get into that a little bit, looking at some of the notes we have here. But we're already, wow, we're already over Iowa, an hour here. But let's just go right here, brothers and sisters. So we've established. Right, we've established this right here concerning Timotheos, Timothy, right? Timothy, the basic principle, and let's sum up right here. So we focus mainly on the matrilineal descent. So we're saying that the matrilineal descent and the patrilineal descent both are important. For example, this uh, this, this 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 precept, right? This precept, right? This has been accepted universally uh, since the biblical time. There were some Yehudis. They knew his mother was a Yehudi, but they were just using that, you know, like a lot of these guys. Oh, Bob Marley, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a Edomite. He, so they don't even know what Esau is. They think he's white and all this crazy stuff, and then they're hating on him. But the Bible says, "Don't abhor your brother." You know, it's like which way? Then they say, "Well, we're like the Israelites in the wilderness." In Numbers chapter one, verse eighteen, and then they're speaking slack on our promised land and everything because it's called quote Africa. And then we find that the Israelites that the Lord caused to wander to that whole generation, the men of war, were dead up with those same ones that went after those false teachings and they slandered the land, slandered the African land. Remember, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, so why are you hating on the land? Why are you hating on, oh, but those African, those African booty scratchers, do you know what they'll do to you? That's the same thing that those people were saying out there in the wilderness where the Lord's going to destroy them. He's going to destroy them if Moses didn't advocate. So what did the Lord do? He said, all right, Moses, because of your advocacy, a year, a, a, a year for a day, right, unto all the men of war. So they, they could play dress up all they want, waiting for the sky to crack or something like that and Jesus to come back. But it's because of their wick, wick, whack, not being obedient, right, accepting what the Most High said and also who the Most High sent, and playing that core rebellion stuff. But here, 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 um, it is the father, right? Let me just speak to the father point right here, right? The father's ancestry, when we talk about determinatives, right? Determinatives is a determinative, right? In what way? Well, the pedigree, according to the father in Numbers chapter 1, verse 18, was because land rights, land, she, in order to be given she, right, you had to link with he, 
In other words, your father. Who was your father? The only one that owned land or had land and called Yisrael in Israel, right, was those who could trace their descendant to Yaakov, Yisrael, and to the patriarchs who were sons of Jacob. Foreigners did not own land in Yisrael, as well as foreigners did not have to pay tithe. A tithe is a tenth of the income of the land. They didn't own no land. They would not have to pay tithe. That's why the Torah says that when the seasons come around, whoever was that patriarch responsible for that land, they would be saving up during the years for the tithe. And when it was time to go to the place where Hashem put his name, right? For example, Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, they would take the whole family. They would take the servants. They would not, you know... Um, they would take the whole family, everybody. We can go through that in detail. So this is why a lot of these guys are poor teachers because they're poor. They're reading comprehension. They read well and shout on the street, but they comprehend very little, right? And this is important to comprehend because those in the wilderness didn't comprehend. A whole generation wandered to death while playing dress up. Hopefully this doesn't happen to us. Now, it is the father and only the father who determines a child's status as a priest or Levite. It is only, it's the father and only the father, right, a member of the tribe of Judah or of Benjamin. Don't you hear me clearly, right? A descendant of the Hasmonean house or the Davidic house, of David's house. So when we're looking at those roles, there are some roles that according to scripture, like for example, you know, the king, right, our king. Well, who's your father, right? The priest, who's your father, right? And the Judah, the Benjamin connection is very important. Now people say, well, isn't Yehuda from Jew? Well, this is where we're going to have to hit you up in the next, in the next one right there. Are. There, there, they are. Yes, I, Rastafari. Like, share, subscribe. Check out the podcast app in the description. Also go to rastafarigroundation.org for comments. We're going to try to get a page up there where ones can hit us up with comments. You know, ones can give comments on the YouTube, so forth and so on. But it's best if one goes to our main website because then we can, you know, we can handle it better there. And then drop a video here, there, and y'all can like, share, and repost elsewhere. Yes, I, Rastafari. Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom.